Welcome back to the Linux Gaming News Punch. This is episode two. My name is Liam and I will be your host once again. We're going to go over another week's worth of Linux gaming news and we shall continue our aim of keeping it short and sweet, allowing you to carry on with your life. This week, the most exciting part comes first. We're going to go through some sales statistics. Oh, come on, it's not that boring. The first one is a personal favourite of mine. It's Rise to Ruins, a godlike village simulator, which across a whole year sold 124,529 copies. Of that, only 1,861 were on Linux. That doesn't sound like a lot, but the current market share for Linux on Steam is only about 0.82%. So that means that Linux copies accounted for 1.49% of the sales. So we're punching well above the weight there, almost double the Steam Linux market share. What's also really quite interesting is that the developer did show some more detailed statistics which show a breakdown per country of copies sold. Now, when you look at it, China only accounted for 13 of those Linux sales, which is not a lot, and that's the lowest of all of the countries listed. And I'll come back to that in a moment, because I'm going to move on to another game called Bite Path, a sort of retro arcade shooter with a ridiculous skill tree. The developer also shared some sales statistics on this one as well, showing that it sold 5,610 copies of that, Linux accounted for 384 of them. Again, that doesn't sound like a lot, but the Steam Linux market share is quite low. And what that actually tells us is that in this case, Linux accounted for 6.84%, which is pretty ridiculous because that is way, way, way higher than the Linux Steam market share. And again, here we see in the breakdown the developer provided that China only sold two copies. Although in this case, Japan only sold one copy as well. But the point I'm going to make now is that in the Asian markets, Linux just isn't popular, which every time a popular game comes out on Steam, that's Windows only. Like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, for example, that is one title where the Asian market sort of flocked to Steam. And this is why the Linux market share dropped so much because you've got so many Asian players, which is a newer market for Steam, suddenly appearing out of nowhere. And so even though the amount of Linux gamers on Steam is growing, which Valve confirmed, at those points where that happens, it's obviously going to bring down the Linux market share, even though it is growing because there's just that many more Windows players. So I just wanted to make that point. Now then, listeners, we're going to slide on over into the software news. First up, the incredible compatibility layer DXVK has finally reached that big 1.0 release. It's a massive milestone for it. For those not up to speed, DXVK is the project that pushes over Direct3D 10 and 11 over to Vulkan for use with Wine. It's part of what makes Valve's Steam Play tick, and I'm still completely in awe at what it's been able to achieve, especially considering the majority of it is done by one person. Honestly, it's amazing. I've been playing Overwatch using it for quite a few months now, and the experience is basically flawless. Once you give it a little bit of time to build up a shader cache, it's so smooth, I couldn't tell the difference whether it was native or DXVK. Simply amazing. Keeping that theme going, Wine itself has a new development release out with Wine 4.3, which includes F-Audio, developed by Ethan Lee. This is an accuracy-focused X-Audio 2 re-implementation aimed at open platforms. It's another incredibly exciting project to follow since it can solve a huge amount of issues when running Windows games through Wine. The final bit of software news this week is a quick one. There's a new project in town called D9VK. It's a fork of the previously mentioned DXVK, only this one is focused on getting Direct3D 9 over to Vulkan. If this project actually manages to reach the heights of DXVK, it could be another huge thing for Linux gaming. However, it's incredibly early days, so don't get too excited on that one just yet. One other point I wanted to touch on this week is a casualty of Epic's new console-style exclusivity wars with their Epic Store, as GOG recently announced the end of their fair price package program. This basically enabled people in certain countries to get wallet funds back when purchasing a game if that game cost more for them in their country than it would in North America. It was quite a nice program. They said they had previously been able to swallow up the expenses incurred from it. What they said was, and I quote, 
with an increasing share paid to developers, our cut gets smaller. And since the Epic Store has a much smaller cut, they're obviously starting to feel the heat. This does also seem to suggest that GOG will be reducing their cut taken from developers too, so that'll be a nice point for developers. To end this week, we're going to shoot through some news about actual games and their various releases. First up, 1991 is calling as Toe Jam and Earl make their return in Back in the Groove. It was funded on Kickstarter and it actually includes one of the original creators, so it should be quite faithful to the original and it seems like a lot of people are liking this one. So you can find Toe Jam and Earl Back in the Groove on Steam. It was a day one Linux release, which is pretty cool. Next up is a bit of a big one. Feral Interactive have now officially confirmed that the racer Dirt 4 is due for Linux in the next couple of months. In the era of Steam Play, it's really good to see Feral Interactive is still doing Linux ports. However, Dirt 4 hasn't had the best reception from users overall. I do think Dirt 4 could be quite good as long as you go into it expecting a different experience to games like Dirt Rally, and I've no doubt it will be a fantastic Linux port as Feral certainly know what they're doing and their recent Vulkan ports have been fantastic. Back to an indie game. This week we saw Streets of Rare Devil's Dare Deluxe from Secret Base be released on Steam. It's a 2D beat em up like the classics. It has permadeath. So once you're beaten up and all your hearts are gone, it's game over and you have to start again. This one is actually a slight revamp of Devil's Dare, the original that they released a couple of years ago. It doesn't include that many upgrades. They said it has a couple more secret bosses and stages, along with more balance between each character. It is a finely polished experience, though. If you do like your beat-em-ups, it offers a local co-op with up to four people, and the Steam controller worked absolutely beautifully with it. You just needed to go into the options, set controller, and adjust it over to the stick if you prefer that over the D-pad. It was a really, really good experience. A lot of fun, a lot of variation between each character, they each have their unique moves and I would certainly recommend checking that one out. For those who enjoy their roguelikes, their action platformers, their metroidvanias, you're going to want to take a look at Dead Cells. This is one of my top 10 games easily that has been released in the last couple of years. It's such good fun and it looks absolutely amazing but the reason that I'm going to talk about it today is that it's getting a huge free update. The update is called Rise of the the giant they're saying is a free DLC, although it's basically just a big free patch that they're putting out. It's actually available for testing right now on Steam as well, and it includes loads of updates, loads of quality of life fixes. If, like me, you've been struggling to actually completely finish it, there is a custom mode where you can tweak all sorts of settings. That is no longer locked behind beating the final boss. You will still need to attempt a few runs in it, but to me, that sounds like a a much nicer and saner way to give people options to tweak their runs. Locking it behind such a harsh wall didn't really enable the custom mode feature to kind of come into its own and allow people to actually appreciate it more, so I am really happy they're doing that. Finally, another bit of good news for those space nerds like me, X4 Foundations from Egosoft now has a Linux beta available to test on Steam. It's a absolutely massive universe simulation, so you get to fly every ship, explore, trade, battle, and so on. We did have to wait a little while on this one, as it was originally released on Steam in November of last year, and we're only just getting it now in an unfinished form. But the good news is that it's actually running really, really well. The developers were actually asked about describing their experiences with porting the game to Linux, and they did reply to say it was a relatively painless process. They basically had everything already done which was required to ensure that the general code base would work for a Linux build several years ago when they were porting a previous game. So that is really good to hear obviously that they haven't had too many issues in bringing a, such a massive game to Linux. And that brings us to the end of the Linux Gaming News Punch episode 2. We managed to keep it just under 10 minutes there. Well how about that? Thank you very much for listening, thank you for the support, and for all the latest and most up-to-date Linux gaming news, check out GamingOnLinux.com. Join me again next week for another weekly look at Linux gaming news. Thank you, see ya.